Hi everyone, Saul here. There are two events starting together with the main crossover event on Wednesday. The Leprechaun's Travel Log and the Massive Treasure Hunt. Both are reruns of previous events, but with some changes. Remember that all information shown here comes from the test server and is subject to change before the events go live. In the Leprechaun's travel log, we can give cola and beer to the Leprechaun so it can travel from town to town. The first town is 50 half kilometers away from the start. Each additional town requires the Leprechaun to travel 130 half kilometers. We can obtain specific rewards for reaching towns and additional random rewards for each drink given to the Leprechaun. Those include artifacts, SSR unit tokens, Eternity Adamant, Orange Emblem, Champion unit tokens, and finally, Premium Orange Artifact. The fixed rewards tend to have the highest value in the second half of towns, achieving the most with Void Mithril and Eternity Adamant rewards. The random rewards will largely depend on your luck, but we are looking at around 45 diamonds per drink value on average, minus whatever materials you don't need. Drinks can be obtained in two ways. First, we can get up to 20 cola and 5 beer per day from doing missions. On the bright side, each mission can be accomplished by free-to-play players, so there are no limitations there. The second way to obtain the drinks is via the event store. We can obtain one beer a day for one diamond and up to 300 beer in batches of 15, 1000 diamonds each. On top of that, Money purchase packs are available, starting with 4 beers for 229 euros once per day. Each consecutive pack is more expensive, and the largest one includes 120 beer and costs 110 euros. Using cola allows the leprechaun to travel two or three half kilometers, while beer allows to cover a distance of four or five half kilometers. In general, we can expect to travel on the lower side of this range, around 2.2 half kilometers per cola and 4.2 half kilometers Per beer. By doing missions, we can easily achieve rewards from towns 1 through 4 without spending additional diamonds. Unfortunately, things get somewhat less interesting after that. Each consecutive town will require a purchase of another 30 beer for 2000 diamonds. At some point, it will most likely be necessary to purchase another 15 beer for 1000 diamonds to make up for a few missing half kilometers. In the end, it should be possible to reach town 13 with diamonds alone. This is not a bad option if you need all the listed town rewards. In fact, it can result in up to 40% discount over the asking price of items. If we include random rewards into the calculation. On the other hand, many players on older servers might feel that they don't need all of those resources anymore. 
in which case the value can drop dramatically to less than 10% discount. As a rule of thumb, it is bad to go for towns 5 to 8 if you don't need Void Mithril. If you don't need Dragon Blood and Quiet Pearls, it's most likely best to give up on reaching towns beyond 4 altogether. There is of course an option of purchasing beer for money, but that's only recommended if you want to go all the way, as that's where the highest value rewards are. Unfortunately, one would need to spend almost 500 euros, and the value we can get out of such approach is less than 270 diamonds per euro. Therefore, it's hard to justify. For the massive treasure hunt, the mechanics are not changed, but we can expect refreshed rewards. This arrives together with over 70 new battle scars arriving in game. There are 22 new purple and orange battle scars added to the previously available treasure hunters. Moreover, there are two new treasure hunters, the King's Rain and Neutrality is Justice, which contain 27 and 29 new battle scars, respectively. Those zones include not only orange and purple, but also new green and blue battle scars. Note, that we will most likely start with one of the previous zones on Monday, which will be replaced by Neutrality is Justice after the patch on Tuesday. Introduction of new Battle Scars also means new Battle Scar sets. Five each in the old zones and 13 and 16 in the new ones. There are no new sets in the Lofty Tribute tab. There are new interesting fragments of history that grant faction bonuses depending on owning 5-star commander. There are also awkward fragments that require premium hero adjutant level 40 to unlock. Other bonuses seem similar to previous ones. The sets from Neutrality is Justice and King's Reign provide bonuses for neutral faction as well as bonuses against other factions and unit classes.
back to the massive treasure hunt, most of the rewards have been updated. We can now obtain pieces of the Mage Archer set. One piece can be obtained as Stage 3 reward, one as Stage 4 reward, and one as Stage 5 reward. The fourth and final piece, Teacher Sanders' bow, is obtained from Treasure Hunt missions. Note that this set does not confer the usual elemental attack and defense bonuses, but offers bonuses against offensive and stronghold units instead. Therefore, it might be prudent to wait for the next iteration of the massive treasure hunt or choose battle scar selection boxes to get unowned battle scars. An important difference is that the Treasure Hunt mission rewards now differ between rounds. There are no specific battle scars given for the completion of the first set of 300 Treasure Hunts. In the second round, on the other hand, we can obtain an orange battle scar, Teacher Sanders Bow, after 250 treasure hunts. Finally, in the third round, once again, after 250 treasure hunts, we can obtain Arcane Orb. That's it for those two events. Stay tuned for the upcoming main event video. You can subscribe to the channel for up-to-date event information. Have fun! and stay safe.